never seems to be bothered when his opponent takes the lead. When he scores a goal, he just takes a casual sip of water. And, you know, he's just that drive that he has to win championships. A critical thinker as well, I'm told. Is FIFA his chess? Well, when I, when I think of it factor with MS Dossery, uh, it's, it's not just the situationals, but he just always manages a way to get the job done. Yes. And that's where the it factor comes through. Hey, I didn't play that well, but I still got to win. And, and somebody else that would have that is an F2 text. He just figures out a way to get consistent results, whether he's playing good or he's not playing well. And if he's somewhere in between, he just gets the job done over and over again. He qualifies for events. He does well at events. Emma's Dossery is in that same category. Same with Nicholas. There's a few guys that you're like, I, I know this is going to be a hard game. And speaking of F2 text, Danny did beat Sakul, and Sakul was up 4-1 against F2 Tags. So, I mean, if Danny beats so cool, you know, we, we could see uh, some good performance from him. Yeah, we absolutely could. As we do look at our featured matchup, though, MS Dossery, methodical in the passing game. Is the current patch going to suit him? I feel like the current patch definitely suits MS Dossery. He still comes from the FIFA 18 or the FIFA 17 days that are a little more old school, a little more classic with your build-up play, possession, structure, making sure that you're controlling a game, you're managing the game. And I feel that post-patch is closer to that than the pre-patch version I where it was a, a little more chaotic. You were seeing long shots everywhere, volleys everywhere, time finish, time finish. It, it, it seemed a little bit random even at times. And I, I think this is a little more well-suited for MS Dossery's game. I completely agree with that. How are the nerves going into a round of 16? Is this when you know, okay, things are real, there's a lot more pressure on me now? Oh yeah, you got here for a reason, so I do believe that the, the confidence is still there, but definitely the nerves of thinking if the play doesn't go your way, if you lose the game, it's still there, but the players have been in these positions before, so I feel like they have that confidence in them. I think the pressure in the Swiss stage is, is higher, actually, because really? nobody wants to go out in the Swiss stage, and once you get here, you can open up, you're guaranteed a certain amount of points, and every round that you go further, of course, of course, you get more points, but at least you've solidified yourself. Top 16 players, I'm in that. Tell me your prediction for this one, then. I think Emma's Dossery is going to get his revenge in this game. I think that he's going to beat Danny, and I love Danny. Please don't come at me afterward if, if I'm wrong, Danny, okay? He's a big guy. He's, you know, he's a tall man. But I, uh, <laughs> I, I think Emma's Dossery will win this game. I, I figure out a way uh, of getting it done, and I, it's just so rare to see him lose twice to the same guy. Alan? And, you know, uh, respects to Danny. Like, a lot of people doubted him uh, in coming up in this new patch because a lot of people were saying that he was scoring finesse shot stuff, and he's here for a reason. But I'm still going to be going with the sorry because, like I said, he's just so experienced and he has that mental aspect that a champion has. Two for Dasari. Can Ajax Danny prove them all wrong? We will send it out for this game to our casters, Scott Cole and Dan Gaskin. I appreciate you, Kay. We're back once again, partner, and this time it is the knockout stage. And uh, I feel like every game's been a winner go home to this point, but now it's official. If you don't win here, you are headed back, and you can hear the deaths. They're already in favor of uh, the man that needs no introduction. Yeah, Emma Dasari is just, uh, I mean, he's the E World Cup champion. He doesn't really need an introduction. Everyone knows he's one of the best players in the world, but he's kind of been toppled as of late as a favorite at tournaments by the likes of Tex, for example. And the man on your screen, Danny, he did take down Dasari the last time they faced each other in Bucharest, but it was a penalty shootout of all things to be able to eliminate Dasari. And Dasari wasn't feeling too well, as Mike LaBelle already mentioned. So this is a chance for Dasari to get a little bit of revenge, but good friendship between the two, a lot of respect between both of them, both incredible FIFA players, both of them in the top 10 in the Global Series ranking. So this is gonna be an incredible matchup. Well, they say excuses are a bridge to nowhere. So no excuses here in the knockout stage. Win or go home. And for IX Danny, even though the death seems to think his chances are slim here, sometimes being the underdog is the best place to be. I was very impressed with uh, IX Danny at the E Club World Cup, which was the, the, the first time we saw him on the latest patch before this tournament. And a lot of questions were asked about him. People were saying, all he does is finesse from outside the box. He's not going to be able to adjust as soon as finesse shots. And he was like, no, actually, I am going to be able to adjust. He was still finding goals. He's a fantastic FIFA player. And he's going to take it to Dasari here. But at the same time, this patch has only helped MS Dasari. If we go back all the way to the first tournament of the year at Paris Games Week, Dasari, he wasn't really adjusting to goalkeeper movement, to finesse shots. He tried as tournaments went on. I mean, he won Foot Champions Cup number two, so he definitely adapted. But I really feel like now we've kind of taken those finesse shots and we get back to a possession, a pass-based game. He is really going to flourish in these scenarios. Well, only time will tell. Two legs with an opportunity to see if he can move on. 
Will you be playing tomorrow? That's the big question right now, as we are moments away. We're getting this one started. Already a minute gone by. And possession here for Dasari. Call it. As traditional, Rogue in those midnight blue kits. And IX rocking the familiar white and red. And let's get it on. Let's do it. It's the knockout stage. Ronaldo. All the way back to Conte, who finds himself in the starting 11. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the, the one thing that caught my eye straight away is Danny does like to have a little bit of speed in the midfield. He likes to chase his opponents around and stop them from being able to play an easy passing game. And there's an early interception for him as well. Boy, Conte standing beside Hullet. It looks like bring your kid to work day. Similar to me and you, really. <laughs> I'm okay with fat jokes. I've... I mean, it's more that I look about 12 and you look about 32, <laughs> actually, is what I'm going for, but sure. We've closed down a few chicken wing buffets in our life, that's for sure. Ten minutes gone by. Hullet. Right near midfield. Who's going to be the first one to crack the scoreboard? That's the question right now. Off the line is De Gea. And we'll have a early foul on Ronaldo, the captain. And oh. he will be in the books here in the 13th minute. And that's an annoying one because there's nothing that Desari can really do about that. Just naturally chasing the ball. De Gea comes out to it and it's just an unfortunate collision. But naturally slide tackling the keeper. Studs were raised. <laughs> So that means that he's going to have to be a little bit careful if he is tracking back with Cristiano Ronaldo from now on. But there's the man. It's not very often we see Cristiano Ronaldo sent off, you know, both in real life and in FIFA, to be honest. Vieira. Hullet. And R9 couldn't get a proper first touch. Back the other way. As I is R9. A lot of letters and numbers. I feel like I'm on the Sesame Street of FIFA. Neymar now. Good play in the midfield by both our competitors so far. Yeah, one thing you'll notice, both of them, when they're on the ball, they're not just going to be simply running and keeping the ball close to them. It's going to be either a very quick pass or it's going to be a croquetta or a ball roll. Anything to separate themselves and create distance between the oncoming defender or attacker in this situation as the pressure being applied by Mr. Sari. Danny very reluctant to play any risky balls so he's more than happy to go all the way back to De Gea and reset if he has to. Need a icon or a flashback Iniesta to show it properly executed. Vieira. Long ball to Ronaldo who plays it into R9. Mbappe chopping through the 18. Heel to heel. Thought about a cross, but Sergio Ramos able to stay with his mark. He loses him, though, and De Gea there to bail him out. You saw a game update flash up in the bottom of your screens as well. The Royal taking an early 1-0 lead against Doofman. So after his incredible last-minute winner in the previous round that we saw knocking out Dax, he's carrying on that fine form. But this one is quite closely contested in the opening. Both players trying to hold on to the ball and just waiting for that right moment. So the sorry. Ronaldo will try to climb the ladder. Well, I'm even nervous with the yellow of him climbing the backs of those center backs. De Gea with a punch. Neymar to Mbappe. He'll play the long ball, but the flag is up. Even I know that. Something that interested me, looking at the bracket as well, we got to have a little glimpse of it. Uh, just looking out how, how things are going to pan out. Dasari, if he were to win every game to the final, he wouldn't face Tex until the final. Whereas Tex, if they were, if he were to win his games, he'd have to face Megabit potentially in a semi-final. That would be a rematch, of course, from the last event where he did fall to Megabit. So some really exciting potential matches. But there are plenty of hurdles in the way, and one of those being Ajax's Danny. With the virtual patrons. 
virtual supporters, if you will, in a frenzy here through the first 35. Have not seen a lot of Conte in that starting 11. Can't question the skills. Unbelievable range. And this was a stalemate right now. I think it really depends on your play style. The height, of course, is a problem if he is, for example, marking the front post on corners, which sometimes you see happen. So that's why you might not see him included. You can see all those go goal updates and game updates at the bottom of your screen. Megabit taking the lead versus Extra. Keep an eye down there if you are interested in any of the other matches in this last 16 round on the Xbox side of things. Ferdinand. There's a quick blazing through ball, but finds it wide. Ronaldo makes a man miss. And Mbappe still has it on the 16 and just cannot get a touch for De Gea. Able to haul it in. And after all the, the hype we've said about Tassari's passing game and how he plays a beautiful game of football, it's been all crosses from him, just getting to the wing, and maybe he's struggling to break down Danny, so he's trying to hit that back post header that we know is ever-present and very prominent now in this current meta. And maybe as Tassari settles into this game, we might start to see a little bit more of his natural passing game, because you've got to remember this is his first game of the day. He secured himself a way into today's games by breezing through the Swiss stages. Well, the early card to Ronaldo for really the only drama that we had in the first 45. Absolute mirror match with just a hair of the possession. Going over to the man from Rogue. You know, Tate Tosari had his, he was feeling comfortable. I'd say he'd be more than happy with how that first get, first half was finished. But he's going to be thinking, all right, I need to actually be trying to work out how I'm going to put the ball in the back of the net because he's been breaking down the midfield of Danny, but it's that final third. He's getting to the wings and he's not trying to beat the first man with a skill move. Instead, he's just tossing that ball into the boss. Maybe just kind of seeing if he can get a, a little cheap goal early on. Just, a, just sneak one. So then he gets a goal lead, and then naturally that's going to lure Danny out of his comfort zone. Danny's going to start pushing forward a little bit more, and then suddenly he's open up at the back. So it's an interesting strategy. I dig it. Rocking the hoodie through the first 45. Ajax Danny will start with the first. Begin the second half. What does Danny and Desari, Desari have for us? And I'm just sorry I said it wrong. You just combine Danny and Desari, it's fine. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. And it's Danny from the kickoff. I can't have Mike LaBelle correcting my pronunciations for the rest of the weekend. Hull it. Neymar. If we were in school, I'd be looking off his paper on the spelling test. I'd help him out with geography. <laughs> We'd probably make a pretty good team. Call it with a long ball. Ferdinand chasing it down. And it's an interesting way for Danny to try and get these balls over the top. And it's Desari playing the through ball outright to Ronaldo, of course, playing at RAM position for those back post headers. It's Desari one time. Couldn't find the way with R9. Yeah, not quite time to perfection, but a warning sign for Danny for sure. Needs to be careful not to allow too much space for R9 on the edge. Sorry, not scared to just smash those as soon as he has a glimpse on goal. Conte gives it to Mbappe. Neymar. Back to Conte. And here's a free kick. And he'll flick it off the power off the post. And the rebound is true. Mbappe. Puts Ajax Danny in the lead. And it's a little bit fortunate in the end, but well, it's creative from the free kick. I like to see it. I've noticed a lot of pros doing it now. Just the flicking volley off the post was unfortunate, but then the rebound. Who else but Mbappe? It seems that we're always saying his name. 
Tournament in, tournament out since that Team of the Year foot item was released. Mbappe's been here, there, and everywhere. Of course, he's just always lurking around the six yard box. Maybe a bit lucky. You create your own luck. He went for it, he hit the post, and then he gets the luck off it. If he hadn't have gone for that, maybe if he had just laid it off short and gone for a double pass or something like that, he might not have got the shot away. He's gone for something a little bit different. And he's been rewarded for it. Marcelo couldn't get there. And Mbappe, boy, a slew full of changes. In the knockout stage. Here on Xbox, they're trying to get to the quarterfinals. Ronaldo, heel to heel by Marcelo with a stand-up challenge. Hour gone by now. Danny with a one-goal lead. And I was wondering wh who was gonna be able to break that deadlock. I mean, I remember at Bucharest, I think it was 5-5 in the end between these two before it went to penalties. Some ridiculous scoreline, but slightly different now with how everything's developed and players are more inclined to be defensive. Oh, and that's close. Those are the deadly through balls that Danny needs to be very aware of. Yeah, Nabar now creeping in the middle field. While Dasari has moved Mbappe to striker. One of the many changes you saw just before the hour. And Mbappe, the, the team of the year foot item, is one of the players that can beat any man because the amount of pace on him and his positioning ability is... Incredible, as you see, Xra is equalized against Megabit as well, so a thrilling game elsewhere. And Ronaldo. Perfect timing, but into the legs of Marcelo. Quite a block by the Brazilian. First time. That is an absolute gem from Mbappe. And Jassari can only smile and just appreciate. First time for Ness. Yeah, okay, it took a little bit of a hit, but if you're using Team of the Year, Mbappe, he's still going to hit him once in a blue moon. And that's going to be a two-goal lead now for Danny, who's going to try and reproduce what he did in Bucharest by knocking out MS Dasari. And this is a big tournament for Dasari. As it is for Tex, they have a chance to be the first player to be named three times on the Foot Champions Cup trophy. Scores on a rebound with Mbappe. And then a deflection from Mbappe off of Vieira. That found its way true. 2-0 now with the throw is Ajax Danny. Our nine will play it back to Marcelo. Waiting for more support. But Conte very involved in the attack. Once again, if that goes in, I'm dead. They're going to have to bring Mateo out here and finish this one. And this is the thing. These, these did go in. The, in the previous batches, oh, th these kind I, I of was jobs there. I was watching. We're going in time and time again. The nerf has reduced the likelihood. But that doesn't mean they're not going to go in ever. There is still that chance. And Danny's taking that chance. Risk and reward. Go with what you know. It has him with a two-goal lead. And Mbappe lays it off for Neymar. And it'll clear the 18. Mbappe. Play it back to Marcelo. Nice lift. To get a little bit of space in the midfield. Yeah, Danny really flowing well now. Reducing Tassari's possession and also flourishing going forward. Looks like he's got a game plan of trying to just work it out to Mbappe and maybe hit a couple of first-time finesse, try his luck, see if any of them are going to go into the back of the net. But he's got other methods of scoring as well. I've seen him hit a lot of low-drivens this event. Marcelo. Quick ball roll to start it, and then he launches it. Mbappe with a flick and a turn! Oh, that's poor. And CR7 made an absolute mess of it. Yeah, Danny lost for words. It was missed time, so it meant that it just got fluffed. You saw the Royal there going four goals up against Doofman. 
The man from North America, unfortunately, not getting things done in the knockout stages, it would seem. Cheeky back heel. Bullet trying to fight. Sabio with the throw. Marcelo. Sorry, just trying to find his way through. And will this corner be the time? It'll be a goal kick as Luka Modric comes on. Sorry, just trying to find his footing into this game, to be honest. He hasn't looked like the Desari of old, or even the Desari we've already seen this tournament. He's been restricted by Danny, and I guess a little bit lackluster in the final third, often resulting in just poor crosses. And that's what the doctor ordered. Cristiano Ronaldo. Arguably one of the greatest of all time. And maybe one of the greatest finishers of all time. Being controlled by arguably one of the best FIFA players of all time in Desari, the current E-World Cup champion. And just when it looked like he was out of this game and he wasn't really offering anything going forward, he strikes at the death in this first leg. Not a lot of 99 shot rating out there. You find it with Lionel, you find it with Cristiano. And this time CR7. And his first leg might be the goal that he needed to regroup, carry some momentum into the first leg. But it's Ajax Danny with early control and maybe a bit of luck with a one-goal lead. It's enough just to plant a little bit of seed of doubt into Danny's mind there from Dasari to say, all right, it was a pretty comfortable game for you. However, I do have the ability to strike when you least expect it. Because I'm not going to beat around the bush. Desari looked poor going forward for the majority of that game. But then out of nowhere, he pulls something out of the bag. And that's what he can do. And that's what champions are made of. When you're not even playing that well, you still get results. And that is a result. Only losing 2-1 in that game, despite Danny having the majority of possession, the majority of shots, is a good result for Desari. And that means it's all wide open going into this second leg. Boy, did he need that. Cristiano Ronaldo... Right at the top of the 18. Able to beat the outstretched keeper and make this a one goal game as they head to leg two here in the knockout stage. Either of these guys deserving to move forward. And I think that's what we get to when we get to these knockout stages and we, we managed to whittle the 32 players down to 16. It was already hard enough after qualification phases to just get 32 players here on either console. But then as you get to the last 16, those players get even tighter and no game is an easy one. You're always worried, am I going to be drawing against the likes of Tex or am I going to be facing against Asari? Danny, unfortunately, always seems to hit these big boys, but sometimes he takes them down. It's just what happens if he gets further than that. Danny knows he has the capability to win tournaments. He's got the potential and he's got the ability to do so. He just needs to have the bottle and needs to close out games like this one. Well, both of these organizations certainly with a lot of talent. And as the water rises, they all rise. And you've seen much of the skill of these organizations continue to be a lot more parity. We talked about the parity that we, that we saw with just being stacked, the amount of top 10 players that are here on both sides of the console. And certainly here in the second leg, it's going to be a true test. And it's uh, another one of the famous matches we get where it's football team versus esports organization. <laughs> We're starting to see it more and more now in FIFA as more clubs are getting involved. I've always thought that it's going to add extra pressure if you're playing for the likes of Ajax, the likes of PSG, who are creating these teams now. But I suppose you could say the same about these esports organizations. They're all as precious as one another. Ronaldo, can you bring us level? Searching for the equalizer. It's Neymar! The Brazilian! And then the camera wasn't on him just yet. But he's just erupted to my left. Danny, with the first possession, first goal, takes a two-goal lead. And he really does show his emotion. He will scream when he gets those goals. And it just resounds around the arena. Fantastic opening goal in this second leg, which changes that Desari 
mentality once again. Glass is sorry, needed it to dispossess, as I was saying, in search for the equalizer. IX Danny had different ideas. 3 1 on aggregate. And that is a early momentum builder. Especially that late goal by Desari. And Danny comes right out of the dressing room with an early goal. Mbappe heel to heel. Now you really got to search yourself. Marcelo was a bit of a liability early in the tournament has well, really s stood up to the task. Yeah, I mean, there are times when he's just hurtling up to the other side of the pitch and leaves a lot of space at left back. I guess the scary factor now for Danny is sometimes when you go up against the likes of Dasari, the likes of Tex, when you do prod them a little bit too hard, when you start to make them a little bit angry, their inner demon does come out and they really start to show themselves, but Danny's still relentless going forward. Neymar! With the service, and Mbappe, power header, turned away. Still pressing. The sorry trying to get out of his own end as he slows the pace around midfield. Well, look how difficult it is for Tassari to keep the ball and to judge where to pass it because Danny is switching back and forth between Hullet, between Kante, and he's sprinting one towards the player, then sprinting the second towards the player. And then he's switching back to that first player and sprinting again, which just makes Dasari constantly question himself and question his decisions. Might have to bring more players forward. And you can you can see the pause right there. He's in a mental pretzel. You're going to have to figure a way to bring more supporters forward to have any sort of outlet and chance to advance the football. And there really is so much kind of counter tactics that do come into it with FIFA. If you're noticing maybe that their wing backs are pressing a little bit more, you might be suddenly asking your forwards to stay forward to really take advantage of that. You've got to be very aware of what your opponent is playing. So you've not only have you got to analyze your own game, you've got to analyze theirs as well. And a lot of the top players are those who can adapt on the fly and change things up when they need to. Onside is Mbappe. He's been an absolute terror to the back four all weekend long. It's not going to stop now, I can tell you. One time outside foot! Almost brilliant! They're always going to be dangerous when you time them green. And that's one thing Danny does so well. It's green after green after green. The man drinks green. Green tea. His choice. What else is green that you can I'm, I'm a green Kool-Aid kind of guy. You okay. know, we're what, in Atlanta. What's Kool-Aid? I'm, I'm from the South. You don't know what Kool-Aid is? Sounds it's basically, to me. basically... Never even heard of the Kool-Aid man crashing through walls? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, you know what Kool-Aid is. You, sc you scared me for a moment there. I thought I was in my own world for a moment. Either way, Danny's drinking something different. And he is certainly showing up today and taking it to one of the best players in the world. Oh, well, he came over and talked to us here at the commentary booth. Here at the Boost Mobile caster desk and I didn't feel any pressure from him. Uh, he sounded very lighthearted, very confident, and it's translated to the pitch. Well, I was just asking him how he was feeling about the game, and I was like, it's a rematch. Obviously, you won on penalties last time, and he was like, yeah, man, but it happens. <laughs> he was like, we have close games. Everyone's good here. Hasn't relied on the first-time finesse since the title update, but he still banged one in. He's had a few gems. He's bought a ticket to the raffle a few times as well. But as long as it cashes in, it doesn't matter. Neymar to Ronaldo in R9. Try to turn De Gea into a human wicket. But he's up to the task. You have to feel if there's going to be a, a fourth goal for Danny, it might be 
too much of a mountain to climb for Dasari, but Ramos does topple Neymar over, but it's waved okay from the referee. Boy, a risky challenge there inside the 18. You don't want to give a PK away, especially with the lead. But they say it's a fair one. Sure. It's just like training. Get yourself in a triangle, kick it around a few times, and have yourself a quarter. Opportunity, the service, the header. Cannot leave Cristiano Ronaldo open on the near post. I mean, Desari did attempt to block that one. I'll give him that. There was a few times yesterday where players weren't marking Ronaldo well enough at front post, just leaving him open. But also goalkeeper movement from Desari, staying firm to that near post, not allowing the header from Cristiano Ronaldo. Switch the pitch to Sergio. Ferdinand to Mbappe. Vieira. Little space here for Marcelo. Such a high work rate. Doesn't mind getting forward. And he's going to have to start to turn up the attacking tactics. But look how Danny's not desperate to go forward straight away. Marcelo did leave a, back, a gap at the left, but instead he switched it. He played it patient. And he went for something more true to his game. He does like to go down his own left wing with Mbappe. The lofted through ball has worked very well for him so far in this match. Ronaldo try to cross it in. Two minutes. Two minutes. Extra time. And Maldini nearly keeping it in. It'll be just a throw. Boy, trouble even getting it in for CR7. And I think he'll be fine with just half time. And Maldini will give a fan a souvenir. And we'll head to the end of the 45 with a 3-1 lead aggregate for IX Danny. And the confidence continuing to build for the young man. And on the other side, Desari needs to find something. No shots on target. No shots at all for him. And only 40% possession. Really not able to do anything in that first 45 minutes. It was all Danny going forward. All Desari could do was just sit back, defend, and hope that no more goals would be going past him. The second 45, here's leg number two. Coming your way with the Sari down two goals. And you need some magic. You're going to have to start sending a few forward and challenging Danny to try to get it out of his own end. If you lose possession, it's got to be an immediate press. It's time now for the Sari to, to go for his backup plan. If it, I don't know if it's going to be 4 triple 2 or 4 one 2 one 2 Whatever his plan B is, you switch now. You give yourself as much time as possible. Well, starting with it first, could be a good thing. Could he get an early goal as Marcelo? Able to make himself narrow and get possession back to Danny. Trying to see if we saw any drastic changes in personnel for Dasari. It's looking like it might be a four. 1-2-1-2, one, two, one, two, judging by the two strikers. Just what you needed. An early goal to bring yourself back within one. Look at this again, Dan. It's a sweetie pie. It's two strikers, Mbappe and Ronaldo just linking up together. And that's what happens when you change up formations. It's going to present different opportunities. Oh, and maybe Dasari does Cristiano just need to be Ronaldo. playing his own game. Not trying to play into Danny's game here. Breaking along the back. Marcelo back to Maldini. Kante, Kante, either way you say it. Kid's phenomenal and would have been clearly the flag raised and he'll back off. Smartly so to waste more time. And you know, it's come so far <laughs> back there. So I would imagine if it is the... 4-1-2-1-2. Two, one, two. We're going to be seeing Modric and Hullet playing as central midfielders. Vieira just behind as a CDM. Luca gets it to Neymar and well, if it's in the game, it's in the game. Here comes a free kick. What have we got from the free kick, Nandasari? 
See if he flicks it up. He'll go on. And Neymar will force a corner. Strikes the wall. But I appreciate the effort. I have been waiting for that one player who just has a knack to smash free kicks in left, right, and center. And maybe Dasari was feeling confident there. It was definitely within range. Space now for Danny, though, with Mbappe. Ronaldo. Nice drag back. And De Gea will concede a corner. We'll see if Danny goes short here. The fifth save of the match for Dasari. You can see the formation changes already offered way much. Way more opportunities for Dasari going forward. He's flowing a little bit better, but I think Danny's going to recognize that and try and starve Dasari of a little bit of possession in the midfield now. More than an hour gone by now. We'll have some tactical changes. Next stoppage as cued by Dasari. Conte will get it to Hullet. Back to Mbappe inside the 18 and just couldn't get a touch. Yeah, he went for the croquetta just to try and beat the man. Shift that from the left to the right foot. But Hullet able to just get what would look like just a pinky toe in the way to be able to just knock it away from him. Otherwise, that was looking like a certain goal with one of the players for Ajax, Danny, just at the back post. Not long left, though, for Dazari, but it's a chance for him to reset and have a look at how Danny's approaching the, this last 30 minutes of the game. It certainly has been a match of inches. You think of the rebounds, just the outstretched finesse just beyond the keeper's reach. And I think sometimes when you do get two players so incredibly matched, and so evenly matched in a game of FIFA 19. It does come down to inches. It can come down to just small mistakes or just a little bit of fortune on your side. Here comes Eusebio for Danny. And it's Ronaldo. Maybe that's enough in the 66th minute. CR7 on the front post with a brilliant header. And Danny roaring louder than even Ronaldo with his suit. And you can tell what it means to him. This man oozes passion. You've seen the highlights of the E-Club World Cup. You saw how Ajax was celebrating with each other, but even on his own, with his coach behind him, he's still erupting, still elated. And at the moment, he's heading towards the quarterfinals. Virtual patrons. Very appreciative of this two-goal lead in the aggregate. 66 minute. An unmarked CR7. Look at it again. Well, he's got two there. That's just the overpowering of a 99 striker who's well beyond on his way to being legendary. Speaking of legendary, Tex 5-1 up in his game in the last 16 as well. So he's heading to the quarterfinals. Sorry, not able to do anything from the get-go. His possession regained by Danny, and he's just going to, unfortunately, kick the ball out of play, but he does shake the head. He knows that was a little bit of a mistake. And maybe he had something queued up. So many times you're, you're trying to make a play. Stick that boot out there on the interception, and next thing you know, it's... Long gone for a throw. And big news for German fans as well. If you are a big fan of Megabit, he's leading 5-2. to two. And interestingly, Megabit only one point behind Dasari in the Global Series ranking. So if Dasari were eliminated here, Megabit would jump into second. De Gea makes an absolute hash of that, though. Dasari can only laugh, but thankfully he still has possession. A little giggle. He needs more than that, though. He needs two goals. Coming up on the 75th minute, a banger! So much power, but De Gea able to get a mitt to it. The gloves of De Gea in this tournament have been huge. 
Mbappe. Thought about Cheeky, and what a finish! We're not done yet. The gloves aren't big enough, apparently. Disclaimer, gloves are the same size across all <laughs> goalkeepers. But wow, okay, Desari right back into it. And it's just a guy you may have heard of. His name is Pele. Brings him within one. Don't put it on Reddit saying, confirmed glove size is different <laughs> in FIFA 19. No, that's a conspiracy. And Pele's name onto the score sheet. And we might see that more, of course, the prime icon moments that have been released. That's, at 99 rated Pele. <laughs> disgusting. That'll be coming into the equation in tournaments in the future, I'm sure. I'm okay with that. There's something about Pele being a super sub that doesn't sit right with me. But Danny's got to be careful not to make a mess of this final 10 minutes. Well, he's going to be stuck between two minds of do I press and go for that last goal or do I keep possession here? R9 with a cross, De Gea with a punch. Mbappe with a flick. Conte tries a challenge. Still loose. Marcelo. Ronaldo's got to get it off his foot. Marcelo's pushing forward. Cross punch kick. It's more like a Batman comic at this point, but is Desari going to be the villain? <laughs> Messi had Pele roaming around just outside the six yard box, but De Gea smartly comes off his line. Danny not able to hold on to possession. Messi, Lionel, lays it off for Modric. What a save! Still loose and powers his way in. We are level 4-4 here in the 88th minute of leg two. And it was such a good save as well. Great goalkeeper movement from Danny to block the initial. But CR7 pouncing on the rebound. And Danny, who's looked so comfortable throughout the entirety of this game, now has to go right back to stage one. And look at that for a formation. Ew. It's like it's almost trying to represent a kitchen sink. <laughs> well, he's going to call off the dogs for a moment as he might have forced extra time here in leg two. And if you're Danny, you got to get out of the mental pretzel. You can't get in your feels here. You played extremely well footy keep powering on it's your time to answer yeah danny has had opportunities he's had the the strikes on goal he's been hitting them greens he knows he'll get one more chance whether that chance will come though in the next few minutes of regular time or whether it'll be an extra time that remains to be seen but all that matters for Dasari is that even though he has looked lackluster in certain stages of this game when the experiences need it Sorry, it shines well, the anger was awkward, but the result was not. Coming up on the 90th minute, Danny wants to be the last one with possession. Cannot give it away here in the midfield. Three minutes extra time. The lob. Can he chase it down? Trying to keep it in for Ronaldo. Marcelo will pick it up. Well, does Sari have some last moment theatrics? Mbappe off to Pele. Here's a run. Lionel Messi, the Argentinian, will force a corner. The drama continues. You can't go short here. Virgil van Dijk also inside the box. And he can't get ahead to it. And pending the match official, we should be heading to extra time. Uh, quite fitting to be going to extra time as we did in Bucharest last month in the Foot Champions Cup number three. Foot Champions Cup number four in Atlanta where we're starting to get a little bit of repetition as these two players, despite the domination from Danny in terms of possession, you can see it on your screen, 63% in favor it was not enough to hold off the E-World Cup current champion of Tassari. Could it be a substitute that makes the difference? You saw the fatigue. Could someone break away on a counter and make this thing true? I think that's the scary factor is that 
mentality wise, Dasari's going to be feeling a lot more comfortable coming into extra time here because he was down, he was out, but he's managed to claw his way back into it. Whereas Danny's going to feel like he's thrown this one away almost. Because in theory, all he had to do was keep the ball away from Dasari, but it's easier said than done in FIFA 19. Danny might have sold, and Uncle Mo is hanging out with Dasari. Talk about momentum, and here's Pele, the greatest off the post. The Brazilian again. And that'll be a foul on Hewitt. It should be a card. He will go into the books. And what a chance from the get-go for Desari. Very rude by Rudd. The post is still rattling from that one from Pele. And I wonder whether Danny might be rattled. He was 4-2 up. All tied up, 4 all now. And Danny... Kill. Incredible round of 16 games we've hot, got it in Atlanta. And Conte are... gets in the Pele oh, on no. the post again. What is it with Pele in post? It's P and P. They're combining together. I might throw up before it's all said and done. Just turn the other way, and then I don't mind. Four to four. A disgusting display as both have shaken the woodwork with the icon at his Pele. Well, you said it was a game of inches, and quite right you were. Millimeters almost to the left or right, and we might have seen one of these players with a goal loop. But unfortunately, they both hit the post stand. The first 15 minutes of extra time come to a close and what an amazing match we've got between our second ranked player in the world on Xbox versus our seventh ranked player in Danny. And both those shots have found the post. Headsy worked by the defenders to be able to clear it. We've seen so many rebound opportunities, second chances. But they're all tied up at four aggregate headed to the second extra time. And sometimes you've got to be switched on when you do see that ball strike the post. You're expecting that ball to go in, of course, but you have to have in the back of your mind, what if this does hit the post? What if there is a rebound? Switch onto one of my center backs and just get in a position where you think the ball might bounce. Give yourself the best of chances to block any sort of rebound goal. Well, this one's been a classic. Looking for a gem. Pele tracking back. Boy, he's going box to box right now, Dan. Well, that's what happens when you get some fresh legs on the pitch, I guess. Take full advantage of the fatigue. And there's a lift. Marcelo trying to give every ounce of energy he has left to chase down Sergio Ramos. Perhaps too early of a cross. And that may be the disadvantage of playing Ramos at right back. Would the delivery have been better if we saw a more traditional right back like Kyle Walker, Cancelo, maybe? But it's... Ramos in that position for the defensive ability. Sergio giveth, Sergio taketh away. Seems to be the meta for the Real defenseman. Ronaldo has an angle. The rollover, the still alive in the 18. Pele with a header. Didn't have the power. And Van Dyke will help De Gea. And what a counter this is. Pele, all alone, cannot chip it in time. De Gea comes out as the hero. And Desari just didn't really know what to do with it there. He was hoping he was going to be at least getting a toe on the end of it, but both players looking threatened and going forward. 
Mbappe now! And he knows what to do with it. And Dasari was on the mat. And now he's the one with the knockout punch, perhaps. The 118th minute where Dasari finally takes the lead in this tie after being down and behind for so long. And it looks like Danny at this point is going to be eliminated from the competition. He now has to go to the tactic screen. He now needs to change things up. And what a game it's been from Dasari. A real champion's performance. And all Danny can think about is what might have been an early lead. Awoke the beast, as you said. Poked the bear. And Dasari now for the first time sees himself with the lead. We saw it yesterday with Tex when he was 4-1 down after the first leg. When you thought, all right, yeah, he's not going to get back into this. Suddenly he steams back into it. And Dasari has demonstrated something very similar here. Slightly more nitty gritty. And now he's just a couple of minutes away from those quarterfinals. Hull it. Gives it to Marcelo. Mbappe. An opportunity. Messi wins the header outside the penalty box. The now Dasari is just going to be desperate to keep hold of it. Two minutes extra time. De Gea way off his line. And they will have a foul here. We got a lot of matches going on, Dan. And this looks like this one might be in the books. It might all be wrapped up. The free kick's just going to eat away at that time. Dasari takes the chance to just sip a little bit of water. Cristiano Ronaldo stood over the ball, but I know this is just going to be passed short and the time is going to be wasted. And it will be Desari heading through in less something short of a miracle for Danny. I go on goal here. I put it over the bar. He will lay it off. And the knockout stage has lived up to his name. And he won't even try to go on goal. Classy move. And Desari We'll be playing tomorrow. He played so well. And he'll be moving on to the quarters. And here's a little bonus action for you. It was that game that I was talking about earlier. Dushman versus the Royal. I believe Royal was five or six up. And it's gone to penalties now. And uh, this one will find itself true. Up 1-0. Winner plays Kurt. 1-1. One, one. Messi now, Dan. Messi gets true. Kante. Kante gets it. Solid penalty so far. Modric steps up, but it goes to the left. Courtois just bombs it to the right. And the Royal unfortunately puts it, but that one goes wide as well. Oh, my goodness. The Royal and the White Kits. And Mbappe. What does he need this one? And what a save as CR7 gets punched away. Courtois now needs to stand up. He has to. Ronaldo drills it down the middle, but safe to the feet, but it's somehow gone into the back of the net. And that's GG. I know we got there late, but the Royal. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We already saw the emotion earlier when Royal was able to get through to the knockout stages, and now emotion must be so high throughout him as well. Dushman, I've got to give credit to him. We weren't able to see the action. I'm excited to see the highlights from the desk because he was down and out as far as I was aware. Four, five, six goals down at some point. Brought it all the way back to penalties. But what a performance by the Royal. He moves on. Well, you see Castro out there. We would call him Carlos around here. We got a lot more action coming up, guys. It has been bonkers here from Atlanta.